those of you who don't know Les, Les Glassman, he's the gentleman who's been up and down all over behind the camera for the last two weeks during our celebration and during the exhibition. Les will tell you a little bit about himself and about the program he's producing for us tonight. And I'm changing the format because I'm thanking him in advance for all that he's done to do this for us and also for bringing us the refreshments which we really enjoy after the show. So I'm handing you over to Les. Thank you so much, and I want to thank you all for coming this evening. It's really so nice to see you. Is this clear? Okay, thank you. Thank you all for coming this evening. Okay, thank you. Okay, is this a little bit better? Okay. I really want to thank uh, Ned, and I want to thank you all for coming this evening. Um, I really feel that Bay Pro here, it's like a second home. <laughs> I've been here in the last, this will be my third time in the last three weeks. But being here for the 20th birthday celebrations was wonderful, it was really very special. And the opening of the Golden Medina, it was, it was magnificent. And I hope tonight you'll enjoy as well. Um, before we start, I'd like to ask, can I, by show of hands, how many of you um, have relatives or come from Litter, from Lithuania, or, or Latvia? Yeah, yeah. Okay, not surprising, it's a South African uh, protea, but uh, the majority do. Okay, how many of you have heard of um, Shwene Sugihara? Yes, Shwene Sugihara. Okay, after tonight, you will know him pretty well. Okay, have any of you heard the name Soliganor? I'll just repeat, Soli Ganor. Okay, so we have uh, two bits, okay. Very interesting, very interesting, okay. So, um, did you, do you read the Jerusalem Post? Because it's very topical. Today, when I opened the Jerusalem Post this morning, they had the article um, about Shaked visits the city where the Japanese Schindler helped refugees from the Holocaust. She's the Justice Minister, Ayelet Shaked. And she was in the city of Tsuruga. Tsuruga is in Japan. That's the city where the Jews came from, from Lita on their route to Shanghai. But how did this all happen? So um, I was very fortunate that I was in um, Lithuania and Latvia and Belarus a year and a half ago. And we went to Kovno. And in Kovno, we went to a very special place. It was the... Um, Consul General of Japan, and there I, I managed to, i heard about Sugihara, but I managed to obtain this video, which we're going to be watching part of it tonight. It's a two-hour video, so we're not going to watch the whole video, but when you watch the video, I want in the back of your minds for you to think, why did he do it? And uh, why did he do what he did? You'll see he, it's quite a fascinating story. It's, it's amazing because it was unique. He's the only Japanese to be recognized as Khasideh or Mithalam, righteous amongst the Gentiles. And he saved, uh, as you'll see in the movie, over 6,000 Jews. But why did he do it? He lost the fortune. And you'll see uh, in the movie, so I want to give it away. But the main question that I want to ask and I want you to think about is um, the reason why he did it. And after tonight, I hope you'll have a good answer. So without further ado, the movie, I just want to show you, we have watched, well, it's actually very, very interesting, this movie. Um, Sugihara was not known in Japan until his death. He actually uh, was an unknown person. But when, when he passed away, when he died, the Israeli am ambassador in Japan went to his funeral. And they say that there were a reporter, he wanted to know, what is the Israeli ambassador doing in the Japanese Diplomats, ex-diplomats funeral. Yeah. And they wanted to know why, why was there an Israeli ambassador at an ex-Japanese, a fire Japanese diplomat's funeral? And the story came out. And then producers thought, this is a most incredible story. And they produced this movie. And this aired on Japanese television. And after the movie aired on Japanese television, instantly, 
Sugihara became a hero. And what's amazing, and I've actually done this quite often, when I was in Indonesia, there was a Japanese <coughs> stamp dealers, and I asked them, have you heard of Sugihara? And they do, they have heard. And if I see tourists here, and uh, I've got a Japanese patient, I asked them, have you heard of Sugihara? Most Japanese know Sugihara, and they know him well. There was a stamp made of Sugihara from Japan. He's now regarded in Japan as one of the top 10 heroes of all time in Japan. The sad thing in Israel, if you ask people, have you heard of Sugi Horror? Okay, Bay Port here, which is unique. The majority do know, but the majority outside Bay Port here, unfortunately don't know. And it's a, it's a real pity, because he, he stands unique through the history of the Shoah. So this movie, it's in Japanese, but it's got English subtitles, and um, it's really quite a phenomenal movie. We're not gonna watch the whole part, we're gonna watch like, the first part, and then I wanted you to see the end part. Um, this is a book that was written by Sugihara's wife. Yeah. And we'll just discuss after the movie a little bit about this book. But uh, if you feel that you want me to stop anything, please feel free. And then at the end, I'll just explain the reason why he did it. And then it's open to questions and afterwards we'll have refreshments. So once again, I really want to thank you all for coming this evening. And I hope... Uh, it's something that uh, is very topical as well. I don't know if you, if you heard the news. In Poland, um, they just had the independence. And there were 60,000 that marched in Warsaw. And they had placards saying, a Jew-free Poland. So what happened is real. It's happening today. And you know, I just saw this book in the library. This is in the library over here. With love, Lithuania. I, I have, I've just gone through each page briefly. But I don't see any pictures of Jews or shuls or anything to do with Judaism. So you can go through this book of, of Lithuania and you wouldn't even know that there were Jews that once lived there. So it's actually, uh, I think this is really important that the message of Sugihara, what he stood for, what he did, that we tell our, our families and our friends. And Karasa Tov, we must have tremendous gratitude for such a, a tremendous icon and a hero. So I want to thank you all. We're going to watch the movie. And I hope you, uh, I hope you get a lot out of it. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, it's a very heavy movie to watch, and um, it goes on for nearly two hours. But this movie, actually, when it was aired on Japanese television, it actually changed the country, and uh, from being uh, unknown. He became um, one of the 10 greatest heroes in Japan. Um, okay, so now the question remains, why did he do it? You know, he had compassion, yeah. but basically he was a consul general in, in Lithuania. Japan was allies with Germany. He telexed Japan three times to the foreign office and they declined three times. He was basically committing treason by doing it. And he knew that if he did it, he'd be fired. And that's exactly what happened. He'd be fired. He'd lose his, his job, his honor. For Japanese, honor is everything. It's the most important thing, um, the honor. Anyway, he did it. But why did he do it? So I heard a most incredible story that I couldn't believe. And this is what I heard. And um, it's, quite, it, it's one, of the, one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard. When the, when the Jews came from Poland, when the war broke out and Nazi Germany uh, invaded Poland, a lot of Jews moved over the border and went into independent Lithuania. And they were in, 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 uh, in Vilna, in Kovno, in all the different areas of, uh, of Lithuania. And they were like, kind of destitute, they were refugees there. And what happened was, um, there was a little boy called Sali I asked you if you had heard of him. He was 12 years old. And his parents had given him Hanukkah guilt for Hanukkah. And a woman knocked on the door, and he was at home, and she said, have you got any money to give to the Jews, that the refugees that have come over from Poland? And all the money that he had, he gave her. He gave her everything that he was given for Hanukkah guilt. A few days later, he was walking in Kovno in Kaunas, uh, in Lefka Street, it's Lefka Avenue, it's the main street in, in Kovno. And he sees a poster, and the poster is for a movie 
Laurel and Hardy. Have you all heard of Laurel and Hardy? Yes. You know, when you mention Laurel and Hardy to the youngsters today, they don't know what you're talking about. But when you say Charlie Chaplin, one was a Clitty and one was a Tinny. Anyway, he wanted to see the silent movie of Laurel and Hardy, but he had no money. But he had a very close connection with his aunt. His aunt had a confectionery shop. Uh, her name was Anushka, and he was very close to her. So he went to go visit his aunt to ask if she could give him a few little copies, a bit of money that he could go see the Laurel and Hardy movie. He goes inside the shop, and inside the shop there's an Oriental fellow. Now, what's interesting in Lithuania, you don't really see many non-Lithuanians. It's mainly just Lithuanians. There are very few Oriental people there, or blacks, or any other. It's mainly Lithuanians. But there in the shop was this Oriental fellow, Sully, this little Sully, who was 12 years old, had no idea who he was. Anyway, he asks his aunt if she can give him some money to watch the movie. And she tells Sugihara that this is my nephew. And Sugihara, as I think you saw in the movie, he was not only the consul general, he, he knew a lot of languages, and German was one of the languages. And part of his position going to Lithuania was to kind of spy on the Germans, because he was fluent in German. So he understood the Yiddish. And when he heard Sully ask his aunt for some money, he said to little Sully, I'll give you the money. And Sully said to him, I can't take money from you. You're not my family. So Sugihara says to Sully, I'll be your uncle. Yeah. Now, um, when I tell this story to people, when I relate the story, when I go back to South Africa and I work as a dentist, the Afrikaans kids call me not tantats or dentist, they say, well, like here in Israel, people say rib or they'll say, but uncle is a sign of respect. But Sully took it literally and he said, if you're my uncle, you, you have to come over to our house for lighting the Hanukkah candles. And what says Shabbos, he actually did. He came over to the house, and it was the first time that he had ever been in a Jewish house, and he immediately connected with the Gnoll family. And something which is very dear to me, Sully collected stamps. And Sugi Horace said to Sully, please come to the consul, and I'll give you some stamps. I get a lot of letters coming from Japan. And Sully used to go there, and he used to get the stamps, and he used to play with Sugi Horace's children. And uh, they say because of this connection that Sully made by inviting Sugi Hara to his house for Hanukkah, the Jews, of the Polish Jews and the Bokhrim from the Mir Yeshiva, you know, the whole Mir Yeshiva intact was saved. Every, the whole Yeshiva, it was amazing. They were, it was in part of Poland, they came into Lithuania. But they came to Sugi Hara because they had heard that there was a diplomat that had a, a kind heart, and he had a, a, a keshe, he had a connection with the Jewish people. So the, what remains is, how do we know that the story is true? It's the most incredible story, that a little boy, because he gave a bit of charity, because he asked, like the Satrachim, because he invited somebody to his house, basically could have changed Jewish history. By Sugi Hara issuing him and his wife, by them issuing the visas, they issued 2,000 visas, till the very last day, so, you, know, you know when you saw in the movie where the Russians came and they said you have to close the, the, the consul because Russia occupied Lithuania and it wasn't independent anymore. So because he did what he did and he issued 2,000 visas till the very last moment, he, he was writing visas till the very, while he was on the train, he was writing visas and throwing them out the window and then he even gave the pad of the visas so people could write it and a few people were saved by empty visas with a stamp. 6,000 Jews left Lithuania and were saved. They went to, um, it was interesting, they went to Japan, to the city where our justice minister is now, in um, uh, Tsugara. And what happened there is that the Japanese uh, official asked a representative of the Jews, and his name, he was Amshin Avarebi actually, he said, why do the Germans hate you so much? So he was a very clever rabbi, he said, I don't know why the Germans hate us Asians. And the the, 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 the 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 Japanese official really understood that, and by that answer, they say it's very possible. He gave them authority to stay in the, in the city in Japan, and then he gave them authority to go to Shanghai, which Japan had occupied part of China, and Shanghai was now part of Japan. And they went to Shanghai, and there are many families in South Africa that have their family that came from Shanghai, many families. I've met many families that their grandparents 
lived in Shanghai and was saved by Sugihara. So I'm going to show you now, when I heard the story about, um, about Sadi Gunor, I was blown away. I really was. And the person who told us the story is Hugh Rachman. He's very passionate about Jewish history. When I showed the movie about our trip to Lita, he was the scholar in residence. So he told me that he actually found him. And he lives in Israel. He's 89 years old. So I said, I have to see him. I phoned him immediately and I went to visit him in Matzah Shabbos. And uh, I interviewed him, and you're going to see a bit of the interview. But he's 89, he lives here in Ramata Sharon. He wrote a book called Light One Candle. I don't know if any of you have seen this book. It's the most incredible book. But inside Sugihara's wife's book, she wrote a book called Visas for Life. You can get these books, I got them on eBay. You can get them on Amazon, on eBay. But this, both these books were at Barnes & Noble. Now inside the book, um, there's a picture of Sonny, and she gives a little uh, explanation, which you'll see on the movie. But what's interesting about this book from Sugi Hara's wife, do any of you remember Walter Mondale? Yeah. He was the Vice President of America, and he was also the Ambassador to Japan. So at the back of the book, and you can look at it afterwards, he writes, um, he writes something about this book. And he says Sugi Hara stood out. He was the only person that not only didn't he gain, but he actually lost. Because he did lose his job, he had no money, he died, he had to go to Russia to find employment, and it was very sad, he died uh, unknown and, and basically penniless. But his legacy lives on. So it's a treat because you're gonna see, in my opinion, a, an amazing person. So what happened with Sonny, he survived, and um, after the war, he, he lost his mother and his, his brother. They died during the war. His father remarried, and they got visas to go to Canada. And they said, you, you must come to Canada after the war, when he was displaced in the displacing camp. His whole story is in this book, Light One Candle, which it's, it's just every page is a masterpiece. Anyway, so he said, I don't want to go to Canada. When we needed the visas, it wasn't there. Now my country needs me. So he came to Israel, well, to Palestine, and he fought in the War of Independence. Somebody to have gone through what he went through, and then still to come here and to fight for his own people. And he's, he's like such a hero because he fought and he nearly died in the War of Independence. So you're going to see tonight a real hero, and the name Sadi Gano. I hope you don't forget. And we really need to tell other people about this, this remarkable person. If you can just hold on, I'm going to put it on. This is the interview that I did, and I just want to show you something before I start with the interview. Um, you all know, you've all heard of uh, Mozambique? Yes. Okay, so this comes on. Okay, so here, it's amazing. Somalia and Mozambique, these are stamps. I collect stamps, and some collected stamps. But these are stamps that were put out by Mozambique. Sorry. It's quite amazing that Mozambique put out um, a miniature sheet, first day cover of. Um, okay, can you see? This is from Mozambique. It was issued in Mozambique, and the one is in Somalia, and the one where I'm pointing is from Lithuania. Israel also brought out an issue with the five righteous uh, diplomats, and Sugi Har is part of it as well. But that's just on the side. Um, okay. Now you saw in the in the picture, um, in this picture, sorry, it's you and. This is a guy in San Francisco. This was in 2005. You had a very close connection with the family. Yeah. My childhood. Uh, that uh, she was invited in all kind of places and she took me with her. And we uh, looked like a couple. It's <laughs> amazing. And you spoke at Barnes and Noble and had so many different book launches and different organizations. This is, I did a little, I did a long interview, but this is a short interview with Sully. It's called Visas for Life. Yeah, by the people, so yeah. That's, uh, 
And then we had a pic, the, the, you saw that picture. Um, Did you see the picture in the background? Yeah. Yes. That was Sully setting um, buns in, in the ghetto in Kovno. Oh now, what happened with Sully, um, unfortunately, he did go through the war, he went through the ghetto, he went through, he went through hell. And at the end, he went to Dachau. And at the very end, can you believe it, the Germans knew they were losing, and they still marched, they still marched the Jews, they still wanted to, to get rid of all the Jews. It's, it's lawyer man, how can it be? Like today, in Poland, where they have a celebration for the independence, and part of the placards are, Jew-free Jew Poland. Yeah. How many Jews are there today in Poland? But it still begs the people that there's some Jews living in Poland. It's like, how can we understand this? What's amazing was, sorry, he did go on the, it was called the Death March from Dachau, and you will not believe who saved him. I'm going to show you a picture here, and Sully will explain. Welcome to the former United States to accompany us to Japan. This is in Japan, and so we are uh, park. These are the guys from the fact uh, from the Japanese American units that saved the children's lives. The guy uh, is talking here uh, and standing next to him is called John Sukan from Hawaii. And these are the ones that signed your book? These are the guys who uh, signed my book, yeah. And they came to Israel as well? Yeah, they did, they also came to Israel. They came with Dov Shilansky. Unbelievable. This is a picture. Last year, I don't know if it wasn't really, unfortunately, it wasn't really publicized in the press here, but Sugi Hara's grandson came to Israel, and in Netanya, which isn't so far from here, on South Netanya, they named the street after Sugihara. There's also a street in, in Yafo, and I think there might be other streets, but they named last year a street, um, um, Sugihara, in South Netanya, the new part of Netanya, near the beach. And his son came here, and this is the son, together with Sully in his apartment, holding the picture of when Sully was a little boy in the Kovna ghetto. And what happened is afterwards, the son, the grandson went to the Mir Yeshiva and um, they met with the Rabbonim. The Mir Yeshiva today is the biggest Yeshiva in the world. And it owes, the Mir Yeshiva owes everything to, 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 to Sugihara. But he went to the Mir Yeshiva and the mother of the Amshan of Rebbe in Baik Vagan went there. She was very old and she passed away. But before she passed away, she was given an invitation to meet with the grandson and she went. And she was very ill, but people said, how come you're going? And she said, ah, we are our lives. There's Karasa Tov. We really have to show gratitude. And what was interesting is that she was interviewed on Japanese television. Japan took a television crew to, to video the naming of the street and to video the meeting at the mirror. But unfortunately, in Israel, and it's so sad, it, it was hard. I went very unnoticed. Such a major event. Okay, I want to show you something also, which is also quite interesting. Um, if you look, um, yeah, um, this is a picture. Did you are with the German president. Yeah, I was invited to the German parliament and they were introduced me to the German president. And what year was this, sorry? It was 2009, I think. And so we can ask, when you went to Germany, it must have been also a very difficult trip to go to Germany. It was easier to go to Germany than to that way. Somehow, I don't know why. And when you went to the German parliament, you were very well received? Very well. And that What's amazing is this was in Sully's study. He just turned 90. He has a Facebook page. He's very active on Facebook. Somebody who's 90, it's amazing. Um, he, he emails, he, he's, he's, it's incredible. And for me, I don't know, it was very, very special coming here this evening. But just before this morning, I went to the post office and I had ordered the book because you can't get it here. But this is the diary of 
Sonny Geno in Kovna, and it arrived this morning. So um, <laughs> you can see it afterwards, but it is, it's got pictures about, you know, the, when they try to liquidate the, the, the ghetto and the seventh fort. It's, it's horrendous what happened. And what I found when I went to visit Sonny, he was so positive. And he's so, when you see his Facebook, I mean, this is somebody who could have said, I had so much, I need to just retire and go on a desert island or something. But he's so active and he speaks and he, he writes and they're going to be making a movie about him. So we look forward to that and we just pray that he'll have uh, good health and many more years. Um, okay, now I just want to, the problem is uh, he doesn't really leave his home now because he's, he's a bit frail. So he's in uh, Ramata Sharon. But it's not all negative. Last year, the, they had an event called Letter to Haim, and the deputy ambassador, I met the ambassador as well, the Lithuanian ambassador, and the foreign minister of Lithuania came this year, a few months ago, and he had a meeting in the King David, it was a breakfast, and he spoke, he, he's really, he spoke very nicely, where he admits that uh, Lithuanians were also involved in, in what happened, unfortunately, and he said we had to take responsibility. I did put that on YouTube, they asked, I was there and I, I managed to video the talk with everybody's permission and it, it, you can go onto my YouTube, that talk that the foreign minister gave of Lithuania is on YouTube. But this is a talk where the, they invited the deputy ambassador of Lithuania and I think it's quite interesting because it's not all negative and I want to show you something which I was actually quite taken aback with. This was a talk that he gave in Jerusalem, I hope it works, yeah. <coughs> Mr. Ramona Stavinovic, please. Good evening. Uh, Sorry, Ambassador is not able to come here because he's a leader now. Um, first of all, thanks, thanks a lot for invitation. As a person who, as a person who was uh, born in Vilna, as a person who was uh, spent almost all his life in, uh, in, in Lita, I'm very happy. And also, also as a person, as a deputy ambassador in the state of Israel, I'm very pleased to be here. Because uh, this movie, this movie sends a quite clear message about the connection between my country and the uh, state of Israel. Um, when we speak about uh, about my country, there is one thing I want to mention very clear. Uh, I was born in 1969. I, um, my childhood, my youth, I spent in the Soviet Lithuania, and I have to say very clear that uh, at that time the Holocaust was not was not an issue to be encouraged to be debated. Only after 1991. We discovered the, the all all black pictures of our history, and uh, we clearly acknowledge what what uh, what happened, at, especially at the beginning of the Second World War. We clearly we clearly acknowledge what kind of uh, what kind of uh, loss happened in Lithuania, and we clearly acknowledge that not only Nazis but also my countrymen, Italy, my my fellow my fellow. Say people from my country, the Fenians, they also participated in these horrible crime crimes. Well, once again, the main point that uh, which I wanted to mention that only that Lithuania became free and independent state. We we, ha we had opportunity and we we faced this abyss. I would say abyss is all these black pictures, which uh, which took place in Lithuania. I want uh, and uh, and uh, that's the main the main thing which we think now is uh, yes. It, we acknowledge it happened, and uh, it's very important to, to, to commemorate uh, this loss. And of course, it uh, will never happen again in my country or in the world. So, once again, I, I want to, to finish on, on that note, and once again, thank you for the invitation. And I'm uh, looking forward to spend this evening watching this movie. Thank you very much. It was quite a remarkable speech that he gave, that he said he admitted that the Lithuanians were accomplices in many of the atrocities. That it's coming from the 
the um, government of Lithuania. And also, um, just to end also on, a, on a more positive note, um, the memorials that you see in Lithuania today, uh, our family came from a place called Mariampol. I don't know if anyone in the audience has any family from Mariampol, it's south of Kovno. Um, there are many signs saying this is where, where the synagogue used to be, this is where the cemetery was. They kind of tried to re-establish the cemetery. They've got tombstones which they re-erected. And unfortunately the place where the mass um, murdering happened, there's many signs in both Lithuanian and in Hebrew. So they do acknowledge it. And um, we just pray that, um, as, as, as the ambassador said, we must never forget, and uh, it should never happen again. So um, on a very, very, uh, I just want to thank you all. And I hope it's been uh, enlightening, and I hope you'll remember the name, my hero, Sonny Lenore, he really is. And you need to look at the books that he did. Just, I wanted to just mention, uh, you've all heard of, she's in the news, you, uh, Nancy Pelosi. You've heard of her? So she writes in, actually in Sonny's book. So this book, it should be in every library. Um, it's such a phenomenal, every single page of this book really is, it tells the history of our people and the history of the Shah. And also the visas for life, if you can try get it, it's, it's a remarkable book. It's the whole story of Sugihara, and um, well, I hope, uh, I hope that you, well, it's not something to enjoy, but I hope it's been enlightening, and I hope you, uh, I hope you gain from tonight. Thank you very much. If there's any questions, there will be refreshments outside, I know the hour is late. Um, but you're free to, I'll stay behind, you're free to ask, and um, if I can help in any way, I'll be glad to. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you mentioned that he uh, died uh, poor, he was a pauper. Uh, what surprises me is that you know, he was known about it for many years, and why was there no uh, attempt? to uh, support him with uh, finances from Israel and from uh, people who survived from, because of him, the Shuru, why was there no collective um, movement to, to, to help him? Okay, very, very good question from Mark. Uh, you're all welcome to have refreshments outside. The question is that because he helped so many people, why didn't they track him down? Why didn't they, why didn't they help him financially and in other ways? Because he was so ashamed of being fired, he actually changed his name. So on the records, and the foreign ministry of Japan wouldn't keep information about him because they felt he was a disgrace, what he did. He committed kind of treason. So people couldn't even know who he was. What happened is after, the, um, after he died, and after the, the, the burial, the Israeli government did something that we can all be proud of. His son, they said to the family that we will pay for his son to be educated at Hebrew University. And his son actually came. And he went to Hebrew University and the Israeli government paid for his education. And his son's got a very close pleasure with this country. He comes here often. And uh, he said he knows Hebrew because he was at Hebrew University. And then later, when, um, when after he passed away, but his wife still, she lived quite a few more years on, people that he had saved met the wife. And in this book that she writes, she speaks about many of the families that they saved went to visit her and they came to Japan and she was invited to America. So it's a wonderful question that you asked him about. But he was so ashamed of that he had no honor that he actually changed his name. And it wasn't from a lack of time. People were desperate to help him. Evening is why did he do it? So, that little boy that, that gave him, um, that invited him to come to his house, he saw, he saw what a Jewish family was. And he was so taken aback by this family that he felt tremendous pity and he felt connected to the Jewish people. So just as Sugi Hara's wife writes, that it's very possible that that meeting coming to his house influenced him to do what he did. Also, he was lost. And it was the right, he said, they said, why did you do it? He said, because it was the right thing to do. He got no money from it, he just, but you know what, he got, 
you got eternal gratitude that will live on forever and ever. Thank you so very much.